office as a Republican, but no governor of Wyoming should append his party affiliation to the office. I pledge to serve all of you, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, all of you, not as Wyoming's Republican governor, but simply and proudly as Wyoming's governor. Support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wyoming. And the Constitution of the State of Wyoming. Some of the people who have attended. I loved seeing all of the uh, former governors, the judiciary, legislators, our U.S. delegation, all on the stage together. You know, that's how we are in Wyoming, all of us working together. And I thought that was just a little microcosm of you know, of the state. I thought it was wonderful. So thanks for joining us on WLM-TV. Truly looking forward to the team that's been elected and uh, just ready for another four years. So what's your, your best memory of today of the inauguration? What's the moment you'll take with you? I think that uh, the governor's speech hit a home run between uh, what Wyoming ought to be doing and what the feds ought to be doing and limiting the feds and doing our own, making our own decisions here in Wyoming. I think that's, that was the highlight today. We take care of each other. And as we move into the future, taking care of each other is a commitment that will grow ever more important. The issue of affordable health care is one that will be addressed. The question is whether we in Wyoming address it in a fashion that fits our needs or whether we accept a design crafted by input from 435 representatives and 100 senators, only three of whom are from Wyoming. Of necessity, the federal health care bill is an enormous compromise that Washington would have us believe will work as well in Wyoming as it does in California or Alabama. A compromise solution may be the best Congress could do. It is not the best we can do. We want Wyoming-driven solutions to health care, to managing our wildlife, our water, our natural resources, and our land. We recognize the best solutions for Wyoming come from Wyoming. In Wyoming, we do not borrow against a future causing unsustaining debt because we recognize every pasture has limited grass, every pasture has a carrying capacity. We will not graze, let alone overgraze, our grandchildren's pastures. We are proudly part of the United States, and now is the time for the benefit of our great country, for Wyoming to lead by example, and we can lead. Well, the take-home message was, uh, you know, we're going to continue to do the good work we've done and put Wyoming first, and because of the citizens and the few, the few people we have, we have opportunities to step ahead of the curve and, and, and lead this country and lead this state. When I campaigned for this office, I explained that I thought Wyoming's small population should never be looked at as a disadvantage. With the character of the people who live here, it should be seen as an opportunity. Because without question, Wyoming's greatest resource, Wyoming's greatest resource is our people. Without you, our natural resources and other resources could not be developed. Without you, our Western heritage and way of life could not endure. With you, Wyoming's future is both bright and secure. Well, now, I'm a parent. I have two children in schools in Albany County. So as a parent, what would you tell me? 
what, what's a good message that you're sending to parents and children? Read to your children, read with your children, um, pay close attention, speak with their teachers, ask them how can we help. Make certain that you're part of the equation because we need you. Our teachers need you and they want you to be part of that. We can help get our young people an education that is second to none. We, with our small population, can communicate more effectively, problem solve more collaboratively, and work neighbor with neighbor towards leaving our children and grandchildren with the same clean air, clean water, and open spaces we enjoy, and a healthy, strong, vibrant economy that makes that enjoyment possible. To do these things is work. To do these things, the small population of Wyoming needs to know their elected representatives. The citizens of Wyoming expect, they expect and they deserve access to their government. And my door will always be open. So we're here with the newly inaugurated Governor Matt Maeve. Sir, congratulations. Thank you. Thank we're you. so happy to be here and have a moment to share. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, thank you for coming. So do you have a, a moment from today that will just really stick with you from your inauguration? A good memory? Well, a lot of good memories. What a delight it was to have the other representatives there, from the judiciary, our former governors, uh, and I just felt honored that they attended. And our congressional delegation, Carol and I felt very special that they took time out of their schedule to be with us. So, And to have so many of my family and friends there was just a delight. I thank my wife, Carol, the love of my life, the partner in every adventure, and Wyoming's next first lady. My kids, Mary and Pete, I could not be prouder of you. And I want you both to know, and I want you both to remember, that no title is more important to me or brings me more pride and joy to my heart than the title of dad. You know, it touched me as a mom when your kids came up and did the Pledge of Allegiance. I thought that was so special. We were, we were eager to have them participate, and, and we were proud of them. Mary and Pete Mead, the children of Governor-elect Matt and Carol Mead, will lead us, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. solutions to health care, to managing our wildlife, our water, our natural resources, and our land. We recognize the best solutions for Wyoming come from Wyoming. In Wyoming, we do not borrow against a future causing unsustaining debt because we recognize every pasture has limited grass, every pasture has a carrying capacity. We will not graze, let alone overgraze, our grandchildren's pastures. We are proudly part of the United States, and now is the time for the benefit of our great country, for Wyoming to lead by example. And I'm here in Cheyenne being the tribal liaison for the Arapaho tribe to the governor. Wonderful. Great time to be here. Yeah, it is a great time, yes. isn't it? Um, did you go to the speech earlier? Excuse me? Did you go to the speech earlier? I did. I did. What yeah. did you take home from that? Well, what I thought was he was... It, it appeared to me, having had my opportunity to work with Governor Friedenthal, that he was going to continue some of the same kinds of things that have been successful. In other words, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, there's things that are going on, balancing the budget with a lot of energy. And then to keep, and one thing that struck on my mind, we would keep the pastures available for our grandchildren, which means no overgrazing or no overexploitation. And so there's a balance there. I thought that was a good point. party continues on outside, we're going to wrap up our coverage of today's events. It's been a very momentous day for the Wyoming government and the Wyoming people as we move forward into a new phase, and there's lots of excitement in the air. Thanks for joining us on WLM-TV, and we'll see you next time.
I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what he, his vision translated throughout the state. And I think all of the electeds will come together and do that. I'm very positive about this.